The sky was clear and the waters were still. William cast his rod into the ocean. It was in the same place, with the same bait, to catch the same fish, and nothing to write to his grandchildren about for the last seven years. The shake in his hands was getting worse, he noticed, so he achingly bent forward and propped his rod under the seat, and laid back as comfortably as his old sore bones could allow. With a straw hat pulled over his eyes, he waited. A moment later, or perhaps it had been hours, he heard dripping, How strange! A cloud decided to cover the sun and rain in my boat on such a beautiful day, he thought. Then he tilted his hat back and met with the formidable gaze of a giant sea monster. He would have shouted if he thought that anybody would hear him. So he did what every man in his eighties would do and quietly accepted his fate. He had been expecting it to come sooner and in a more ordinary way, but there it was, death itself, staring at him in all its azure majesty, and nobody will ever know how awe-inspiring she looked. But his expectations were averted again, when the monster dunked slowly back into the depths, barely making any ripples. William looked over the lip of his boat to catch a glimpse of the rest of the beast. There was only a flash of an eye that was thrice as big as his boat. It blinked, and there were frills, spikes, and scales winding underneath the little dinghy. Suddenly, the boat rocked violently, and he saw himself rising miles up into the sky. The serpent had picked him up on its muzzle, and it started racing at a blinding speed through the wind and the water, toward the vast ends of the ocean. Many hours had passed, and William thought he would have reached the end of the world by now, but what he saw was a far more familiar sight. An island was approaching, and the serpent slowed down. On the island was a man, clad in robes with coiled cerulean knotwork designs and a staff made out of sparkling blue scales. The serpent let the boat slide onto the beach next to the new figure. We have been waiting for you, he smiled. I am Tyrk, the druid of Kilda, and I am here to unite you and Olivia for a life hereafter. Olivia? The old man looked struck with grief. His jaw hung loose as he turned slowly to meet the serpent's stunning gaze. Its eyes seemed to glisten. Olivia. His sight fogged behind the welling tears. He wanted to say so much about what had happened in the last seven years, after his beloved wife, Olivia, drowned in the ocean. Or so he thought. Olivia, do you take William as the tide that propels you to be your strength? as the caves of the deep that hide you to be your protection, and as the vast ocean with its richness to be your sustenance, from now until the seas may dry, to be your loving mate? The druid raised his staff toward the sun in between the couple and proclaimed it as if it were the gods of the ocean itself. Olivia responded with a deep rumble in her gullet that shook the water and the sand, ending it with a swift snap of her enormous jaw. William do you take Olivia as the currents that lull you to be your support, as the depths that enliven you to be your guide, and as the precious pearls and jewels of the deep to bear your young, from now until the seas may dry to be your loving mate? The shaman declared again, and William quickly understood what his decision would implicate. He pondered, and continuing his life as a human and perishing under the mournful gaze of his children and grandchildren, then he pondered, being reunited with his bride, even if it would be in a different life. I do, William vowed, overwhelmed with tears. Then the druid brought down his staff and the impact sent waves through the water and the shimmering lights seemed to dance, as if they reveled in the new union. Then let it be known that I, Tyrk, unite you as loving mates from now until the stars may fall. Blessed be your love, and may you roam the seas free and unchained like the gods of the wild itself. Olivia opened her jaws and roared to the skies, coiling her body to stir the waters. William smiled at the sight. All his fears left him. Then the druid guided him into the water, where the waves stroke his knees. He ceremoniously tapped the staff onto William's forehead, then bid them farewell. His human form twisted into a grey worm-like shape, convulsing energetically until it splashed into the water and swam to the deep end. From there, a few moments later, an even bigger, more vibrantly coloured serpent head emerged. It looked around agitated 
until Olivia touched her nose to his. The new cyan serpent relaxed for a moment to show his loving gratitude. Then they both disappeared under the waves to forever roam the oceans as free they wished to be.